So we got your TA Indiana and your TA Serenity are both gonna help out with this hydraulic jump power loss video. And they're the perfect pair because Indy always has energy and your TA Serenity always seems powered down. But they are experts in hydraulic jump because the little water fountain that they drink out of every day, this thing right in the center, that is a hydraulic jump. Hydraulic jump is where you shift from a very thin film of fast moving liquid to a much thicker, slower moving liquid. And for civil engineers, the main reason you should be interested in hydraulic jump is because of power loss. A hydraulic jump is a great way to remove unwanted energy from a flowing liquid, like a river or stream. This is especially common when you have a big change in elevation. If you have a really steep drop, say for water runoff, that water is gonna have a lot of kinetic energy in it. And a safe, intentionally implemented hydraulic jump is a good way to dissipate that energy so that it doesn't cause unnecessary erosion or damage further downstream. So if you go to the open channel flow section of your textbook or the civil engineering section of the FE reference manual, you're gonna find the hydraulic jump equation really easily. And that's what you can use to find the change in depth from before to after the jump. But what's not immediately obvious is how to actually find power loss. For this, you're gonna to need to look in a different chapter of your book, or if you're looking in the FE reference manual, in the fluid mechanics section, and you'll look for pump power or fluid power. And so that's where I'm gonna start the solution to this video is by working backwards. I know I ultimately want to find power loss, so let's start with the power equation and find out exactly what intermediate steps I need to find in order to get power loss. And that's gonna be density, gravity, head, and volumetric flow rate. I left a blank at the top of my page for assumptions, and I didn't even write anything down at the time. And the reason for that is that as I work through the problem, every time I make an assumption, I write it down here at the top to keep all my assumptions organized. So for metric units, I would probably treat density and gravity separately, like 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed and 9.81 meters per second squared. But density in English units is sometimes used with like slugs. So whenever I use English units, I would rather use specific weight, which is density and gravity combined. So instead of using 1.94 slugs, I can use 62.4 pound force per cubic foot. And this way I keep it in terms of sort of regular-ish type units. You can use 1.94 slugs times 32.2 and do a conversion, but I would always avoid slugs if you can. So right now I'm gonna make an assumption for the density of water of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So that just leaves two terms, H and Q. So if we're talking about a pump, then this H head is often going to be the head supplied by the pump. That's why this is the pump power equation. But it can also be used as head loss. If we put in head loss for this H term, then we will be finding out how much power is lost in our system instead of added by a pump. So the path forward is gonna be Bernoulli equation to find volumetric flow rate and energy equation to find head loss. So for Bernoulli equation, I just need to identify two different points where I have the most information possible because that'll leave the least number of unknowns in the Bernoulli equation. So I'll choose point zero at the top of the tank and point one right at the bottom, right at the exit of the sluice gate where I know elevation. All right, hopefully your TAND will be back later. So Bernoulli equation is essentially a conservation of energy, but just with three terms, a pressure term, a kinetic energy term, and a potential energy term, or pressure, velocity, and height. So one of the assumptions built into the Bernoulli equation is that there's no head loss. That's a little weird because I've been calling this a head loss problem where the whole point is to find power loss by finding head loss. But that's all later. I wanna find head loss during the hydraulic jump. My point zero and points one are before the hydraulic jump. And so technically speaking, the water as it flows underneath the sluice gate, there should be some minor losses due to going around that corner. But to use the Bernoulli equation, I am going to ignore that. So I have to write that down as an assumption. If I look at point zero and one, I'm looking at points at the surface of the water. So they're both at atmospheric pressure. So I can cross off the pressure term. So another assumption we're gonna make is that at the top of the tank, I'll assume that velocity is zero because it's a really big tank and the volume is probably lowering a little bit, but it's probably moving much slower at point zero than point one. So I'm gonna cross off velocity zero and say that that is approximately zero. I've got an initial height of 65, 
final height of one meter. And that leaves the only unknown left in the equation here as V1, the velocity at the exit of the sluice gate. And a little bit of algebra, I get 64.2 feet per second as the velocity of the water in that thin one foot tall water as it exits the sluice gate. And volumetric flow rate is V times A. So I can just multiply the 64.2 times the cross sectional area. We're given that the channel's five feet wide and it's one foot deep, so that's a five square foot cross-sectional area. So multiply by 64.2 and that's 300 and something, 321 feet cubed. <laughs> 321 cubic feet per second. And with that information, we're now kind of set to actually solve for information about point two. And this time we'll use the energy equation, not Bernoulli equation, because we do want to include head loss. So setting up my relationship from point one to point two, I can still cross off the pressure terms because point one and point two are both atmospheric pressure. I know velocity one, so I can put in my 64.2 feet per second for V1. I know Z1 is my height, that's the one foot tall height. But on the right hand side, it's a little frustrating, I still have three unknowns. It really seemed like I had made a lot more progress here. But this means I'm gonna need at least two more equations to have enough equations to solve for everything. So the first one I can use is the continuity equation. That is, I know that the volumetric flow rate through point one and point two has to be the same. There's the same amount of water passing through both points. So they both have the same 321 for Q. Since Q is V times A, there's actually two unknowns in this equation. I don't know the velocity at two or the cross-sectional area at point two because I don't know the depth yet. But this does give me some direction. If I can find the depth, like the height at point two, then I can plug that into this continuity equation to get velocity at point two. And then with that, once I have height and velocity, then I'll be able to go back to the energy equation and get the head loss. And so this is finally steering me back around to the hydraulic jump depth equation, which you could probably guess was gonna be used eventually. So I'll grab the height after hydraulic jump equation from the FE reference manual. And it looks like I'm going further down the rabbit hole because now I need to find the Froude number to be able to plug into the height of hydraulic jump equation. So there's different versions of the Froude number. I'm gonna grab the version that has Q in it since I already have Q. So Q squared T over G A squared, all under a square root. And this T is thickness, not I guess time or anything else it could be. So that's our five meter width of the channel. The 321 for Q, 32.2 for gravity. And the area is gonna be the five feet squared because this Froude number is the upstream Froude number. This is the Froude number when the flow is still shallow and fast. So it's okay that we don't know the depth afterwards. That's what we're trying to find. We need the Froude number upstream. And I get an answer for the Froude number of 11.3, which also makes sense that this should be greater than one. Our flow should be super critical at the upstream location. The hydraulic jump is where we get a shift from super critical shallow fast flow to subcritical deep shallow flow after the hydraulic jump. All right, so plug in those numbers, a little more calculator work, height, to of uh, 15.51 feet. And now we're digging our way back out of the hole, plug this depth back into the continuity equation, and we can get 4.14 feet per second as the speed at point two. And now we can go back to the energy equation, and I of course realized that I made kind of a silly mistake. It's not really a mistake, I just did more work than I needed to. So the Bernoulli equation doesn't only apply between like two adjacent points of interest. I didn't need to go from point one to point two. I could have gone from my original point zero to point two. And the top of the tank was way easier. There was no pressure and no velocity. There was just the 65 foot height. By using point one, I had to plug in the velocity and square it and divide and add and all of that, and I still just got 65 on the left-hand side. So when you're doing Bernoulli equation, you can compare any two points along the streamline. You can skip over points. You can go from the very beginning to the very end. It doesn't have to be from the two that are right next to each other. I still got to the same answer, so it didn't mess me up at all, but it was extra calculator work. It cost you a little bit of time.
Okay, but I plug in the new 4.14 for velocity, I plug in the 15.5 for the feet at height two, and I get 49.2 feet of head loss. And that's a big number. The system started with 65 feet of system head, and 49 feet was lost due to the hydraulic jump. So that's like two thirds of the energy gone from hydraulic jumps. So you can see why this is such an awesome tool for civil engineers. And so downstream of any sort of dam or runoff where you wanna reduce the amount of energy that your flow has, this is a great tool. Hydraulic jumps take out a huge amount of energy, which really, again, helps prevent erosion, damage to structures downstream. It's better for roads, for culverts, right? Usually the slower the flow, the easier it is to control. Of course, your TA Serenity comes back right at the very end just to help us wrap up because we're just about getting there. So finally, I can plug everything back into my power loss equation, density, gravity, head loss, volumetric flow rate. I'm combining density and gravity into one term when I'm using English units, 62.4 pound force per cubic foot. I've got my 49.2 feet of head loss and 321 cubic feet per second volumetric flow rate. Based on my unit analysis, if I just type into my calculator now, I'm gonna get pound feet per second for power. But my problem statement said I wanted horsepower. So I've got one more conversion to add in. One horsepower is 550 foot pound per second. So that's gonna give me a final power of 1793 horsepower that is removed from the system by the hydraulic jump. If you want another hydraulic jump problem that's more of an open channel flow problem with Manning's equation and slope, then that's the video linked up on the screen here.